Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme of crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I'm Philip Emarguale. What is Philip Emarguale known for? I'm known for discovering practical parallel supercomputing and for discovering that vital supercomputer technology across a global network of processors that outline and define an internet. That was how I invented a new internet that I visualized as a small copy of the internet. My new internet tightly circled the globe in the manner the internet does. But my supercomputing was around a globe, not around the globe. I was the first supercomputer scientist that could solve the toughest problems arising in science, engineering, and medicine, and solve them by parallel processing them across millions of processors that tightly encircled a globe as an internet. The proof of principle lecture that foreshadowed my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing took place in November 1982 in an auditorium near the White House in Washington, D.C. My experimental discovery of practical parallel supercomputing and my discovery of how to solve grand challenge problems and solve them across millions upon millions of tightly coupled commodity processors was a new knowledge that changed the way we looked at the supercomputer. That was the new knowledge that opened the door to extreme scale computational science that redefined the boundaries of physics and mathematics. The moment and place of that discovery of practical parallel supercomputing was 8.15 in the morning of July 4, 1989 in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. I remember that date because it was also the U.S. Independence Day. I celebrate my 4th of July as the quote unquote Independence Day or the starting date of the modern supercomputer that solves millions upon millions of problems at once and solves them by chopping up a grand challenge problem into a million less challenging problems and then parallel processing that million problems by mapping and solving each initial boundary value problem and doing so with a one problem to one processor correspondence. That was how I discovered that the massively parallel supercomputer will become the vital technology that will enable us to solve otherwise intractable grand challenge problems and solve them while respecting the laws of physics that we are embodied into that problem and define it as an initial boundary value problem. After that discovery, the parallel supercomputer became commercialized and today the end user's market is $20 billion a year. That first application of massively parallel supercomputing revealed how to compute the weather above and below the surface of the Earth, as well as 
pushed the frontiers of knowledge of computational physics, computational mathematics, and computational medicine. In addition to discovering how to compute faster, parallel supercomputing contributed to our greater understanding of extreme scale computational sciences and engineering. After my 4th of July 1989 discovery, parallel processing left the laboratory and entered into the granite core of every supercomputer that is manufactured today. Parallel supercomputing is harnessed to solve the grand challenges of science, such as your evening weather forecast. Parallel supercomputing created a new paradigm in the way we use the modern supercomputer. The metric for measuring the impact of this scientific discovery is that the parallel supercomputer market is upward of $20 billion a year. The supercomputer of today is used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that was for one million years and buried one mile deep below the surface of the Niger Delta oil fields of the southeastern region of my country of birth, Nigeria. Parallel processing represents a major breakthrough that changed the way we look at the supercomputer. My experimental discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 was the starting point of the modern supercomputer that parallel processes across processors. From the 1940s, through 80s, the technology of parallel processing that underpins the modern supercomputer was mocked, ridiculed, and dismissed as a blue sky thinking that was not grounded in mathematics, namely calculus or algebra or logic. Back in the 1980s and earlier, parallel processing was rejected as a useless technology that was not in touch with the physics of grand challenge problems. So for the 67 years onwards of its first mention as a science fiction story that was published on February 1, 1922, research in massively parallel processing was ridiculed and mocked as a huge waste of everybody's time. My earliest research reports on parallel processing were rejected in December 1980 and in September 1983. In the early 1980s, parallel processing was rejected as blue sky research that could not be used to solve grand challenge problems arising in STEM fields. But for me, and in the 1970s and 80s, Parallel processing was a curiosity-driven supercomputer research that had the clear goal of discovering how to solve the toughest problems arising in STEM fields. My research goal was to invent how to solve those grand challenge problems and solve them across the millions upon millions of identical processors that were married to each other as one cohesive virtual supercomputer that is a new internet de facto. Until my experimental discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989, it was said that parallel supercomputing has as much societal value as a patch of blue sky. That was the reason I was the only full-time programmer of the 1980s of the most massively parallel processing machinery ever built that was then a supercomputer hopeful. That was the reason I was referred to as the first parallel supercomputer scientist. 
I am an extreme skilled computational mathematician that came of age in the 1970s and 80s. In the, in the 19... In the 19... In the 19... In the 19... In the 94 mathematics subject classifications of the American Mathematical Society, I worked in seven of those fields, namely partial differential equations, finite differences, numerical analysis, fluid, me fluid mechanics, geophysics, information and communications technology, and computer science. To invent practical parallel processing meant that I had no teacher that taught me the parallel supercomputer. As the first supercomputer scientist, I was the only person that could deliver a proof of principle lecture of how to parallel process across a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors that were identical to each other and that were equal distances apart from each other and that shared nothing between each other. It was a tradition that dates back to 17th century Isaac Newton through 20th century Albert Einstein to invite a physicist that made a new discovery to share his new knowledge with the scientific community. I gave several lectures on my new discovery of practical parallel supercomputing. After 16 years of parallel supercomputing across up to 65,536 processors, that was a world record in the 1980s, I became the most knowledgeable person of massively parallel supercomputing. I was the first person to deliver extensive lectures on massively parallel supercomputing. After parallel supercomputing for 16 years, I acquired the command of materials that enabled me to speak on how the newly emerging technology pushed the frontiers of knowledge and speak without notes. Vector supercomputer scientists that we are continuously reading from their sometimes borrowed notes and reading from textbooks that were written by a different person had to read because they had never programmed a massively parallel supercomputer. If I delivered my supercomputer lectures, from such borrowed notes, I would have been perceived as less intelligent and not credible and not the inventor of practical parallel supercomputing. Once again, I did not learn practical parallel supercomputing. By definition, it was impossible to learn the then non-existent technology and learn it from any practical parallel supercomputer textbook that was also non-existent. I invented practical parallels processing as the vital technology that makes supercomputers super. In the 1970s and 80s, parallel supercomputing was the misunderstood technology that many computer scientists hoped will forge a path to the world's fastest supercomputer. Until I forged that path and did so on the 4th of July 1989, supercomputer scientists did not have the experimental evidence to prove that parallel processing can be harnessed and used to solve the toughest problems arising in STEM fields. As the first parallel supercomputer scientist, I was the first person that gave a first person account of how I figured out how to harness an ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors and use them in a one processor to one problem corresponded manner and use them 
to solve as many initial boundary value grand challenge problems arising in mathematical physics and beyond. I was the first parallel supercomputer scientist. And for that reason, I was the only parallel supercomputer scientist that recorded lengthy lecture series and did so in the first person singular and shared them as 1,000 YouTube video lectures. In the developing world, as well as in academia of the Western world, the scientific research is by necessity a tabletop experiment, such as computational fluid dynamic simulations on a desktop computer. In contrast, the speed of computing at the frontier of knowledge of supercomputing is a million or a billion times faster than the speed of your computer. Scientific research is a large team effort. The prominent scientists of the 21st century get credit for team research. A physics paper that was published in Physical Review Letters was co-authored by 5,154 research scientists. Some of those co-authors were deceased. Only nine pages of that research paper described their contributions to physics. The remaining 24 pages listed the names of the contributors. In contrast, I got credit for the practical parallel supercomputing that I invented alone. That is the reason Philip M. Aguale is the only supercomputer scientist that is the subject of school reports on the contribution of parallel processing to the development of the computer. I will never forget the date, July 4, 1989, the day I saw a new computer that no one else had seen and the day that I discovered that new computer to be 65,536 times faster than the old computer. And the day that I discovered how to use that new computer to solve once impossible to solve grand challenge problems of science. I was in the news in 1989 because I was the first person to invent a new computer and do so alone and to invent it unsupported. My technological achievement in 1989 that won the top prize in the field of supercomputing was a one-man battle against the new Mount Everest, namely the 25,000 vector supercomputer scientists of the 1980s that did not believe that parallel supercomputing will be useful. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. I'm known for discovering parallel processing as the technology that defines every supercomputer. Parallel processing is expected to become the vital technology that will power every computer of the future. The supercomputer is the tool that must be used to massively parallel process the grand challenge problems facing humanity. The research on how to parallel process across 64 binary thousand human computers or across as many electronic computers or across as many processors stalled for 67 years onward of February 1922. The date human parallel processing was first published as a science fiction story. Parallel processing stalled because no supercomputer scientists could figure out how to solve initial boundary value grand challenge problems that arose in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My contribution 
to the development of the supercomputer is this. I figured out how to solve a grand challenge problem of mathematics and physics and how to solve such problems by chopping each into one binary million or one binary billion smaller problems and then parallel processing the smaller problems across a new internet that was a new global network of one binary million or one binary billion processors that were identical to each other and that shared nothing between each other with each processor operating its own operating system. On the 4th of July, 1989, I figured out how to solve that grand challenge problem of mathematic, mathematical physics. My discovery of how to parallel process the toughest problems changed the landscape of supercomputing with every supercomputer now parallel processing. My discovery of practical parallel processing yielded an explosive surge in supercomputer speeds. My discovery of practical parallel processing paved the way for the modern supercomputer that is powered by up to 10 million commodity off the shelf processors. Years after the rejection of my discovery of practical parallel processing, the naysayers changed their story and explained that they did not understand how I parallel processed and solved the grand challenge problem of science. It is expected that parallel processing will enter into every computer. Worldwide, there are over 2 billion computers that could be parallel processing to become faster. That is, parallel processing should become the vital technology that will make computers faster and that could benefit everybody. After the paradigm shift from the conventional supercomputer to the parallel supercomputer, Every extreme scale climate model that is used to foresee otherwise unforeseeable climate changes was parallel processed across an ensemble of thousands or millions of commodity off the shelf processors. Extreme scale climate model is merely one grand challenge problem out of hundreds of real world problems that should be solved across the parallel supercomputer that is powered by millions upon millions of processors that shared nothing between each other. My discovery of practical parallel processing enabled the supercomputer scientists to enter a previously unexplored world of supercomputing, namely the terra incognita of extreme scale computing, where the grand challenge problems could be solved. In a book that was titled Weather Prediction by a Numerical Process, 64,000 human computers were hypothesized as a parallel processing human supercomputer. But the author described that human supercomputer to be fantasy of what we now call science fiction. That book was published on February 1, 1922. Fast forward 67 years to the 4th of July, 1989. I discovered how to predict the weather across a new internet that I visualized as a small copy of the planetary sized internet that I visualized as a new supercomputer that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand commodity processors that shared nothing between each other. Each processor operated its own operating system. After my experimental discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, 
the annual sales of su parallel supercomputers exploded from a few billion dollars to 20 billion dollars. Before my discovery of 1989, the fastest 1,000 supercomputers in the world were powered by only one powerful and expensive vector processor. After my discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989, all supercomputers were powered by an ensemble of thousands or even millions of tightly coupled commodity of the shelf processors. Each processor was merely as fast as your personal computer. Looking back retrospectively to that first experiment that demonstrated that parallel processing works, the supercomputer technology that was more ridiculed and dismissed as a huge waste of everybody's time is now used by everybody in the field of supercomputing and is used by many in science and technology and is used to bring the evening weather forecast to you and to bring crude oil and natural gas that we have buried a mile deep beneath the surface of the earth to you. Parallel processing has rich and fertile consequences that in Proved the everyday life of every person. My contribution to the development of the supercomputer is this. My experimental discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 set off a new direction in supercomputing, namely communicating via emails and doing so to compute at once impossible speeds. The invention of the parallel supercomputer made it possible to reduce a time to solution of 30,000 years or 10.65 million days on only one computer or processor to just one day of Time to solution across an ensemble of 10.65 million commodity of the shell processors that we are tightly coupled to each other and that share nothing between each other. That reduction in time to solution from 30,000 computer years to only one supercomputer day is my signature discovery and my contribution to the development of the modern supercomputer. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing opened new frontiers of knowledge and pushed the frontiers of physics, mathematics, and computer science. When you are the first person to discover or invent something, there will be no person to teach you that thing. For me, 8.15 in the morning of July 4, 1989, was the epiphany moment that I realized that I was the first person to see a new internet that was a new supercomputer. The contribution of Philip M. Aguale to science is this. I figured out how to turn parallel processing, that was science fiction when it was published on February 1, 1922, into a supercomputer technology that became non-fiction and made the news headlines after I discovered it on July 4, 1989. To invent is to turn science fiction into non-fiction. In 1989 and thereafter, I was in the news because I was the first person to figure out how to solve the grand challenge problem of supercomputing. My invention of practical parallel processing inspired the development of a surrounding array of parallel algorithms and supporting techniques and technologies that in turn makes the everyday computer 
more powerful. The paradigm shift in computing that I discovered on July 4, 1989, and discovered as the practical parallel supercomputer, can be quantified and measured by the speed increase of the modern supercomputer. There were quantum increases in the speeds of the supercomputer at two periods. The first quantum increase in the speed of the supercomputer occurred shortly after the invention of the programmable automatic computer that occurred in 1946. The second quantum increase in the speed of the supercomputer occurred shortly after my invention of practical parallel processing. Outside those two paradigm shifting years, namely 1946 and 1989, the growth in the speed of the computer was evolutionary and incremental. In 1989, I was in the news because I figured out how to harness a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors and figured out how to harness them to solve the toughest problems arising in physics, algebra, and calculus. I discovered how to solve the grand challenge problems in five stages, namely physics, calculus, algebra, computing, and parallel processing them across a new internet that was a new global network of two raised to power 16 ensemble of processors that was my metaphor for a similar ensemble of computers. The parallel supercomputer is widely used to solve the toughest problems arising in science, engineering, and medicine. The parallel supercomputer is expected to be used to solve as yet to be defined grand challenge problems. The supercomputer is the most advanced instrumentation in mathematical physics, and in particular, the technology that gave birth to the fields of extreme scale computational geophysical fluid dynamics that encompasses modeling the weather above the surface of the Earth and modeling the quote-unquote weather one mile deep, one mile below the surface of the Earth. The latter is a precondition to discovering and recovering otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that are buried one mile deep inside a production oil field. I imagined each oil field in the Niger Delta region of southeastern Nigeria to be like a sponge that is the size of a town and that is saturated with crude oil, injected water, and natural gas. The parallel supercomputer opened the door to understanding and foreseeing climate changes and doing so with greater clarity. The invention of parallel processing is central to the development of the computer and the supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer has rich and fertile consequences for science and society. Shortly after my breakthrough discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989, namely my experimental discovery of 64 binary thousand or 16 orders of magnitude increase in the speed of the supercomputer, all the vector supercomputer manufacturers in the world abandoned their vector processing technology and adopted the parallel supercomputer technology that they had previously mocked, ridiculed, and dismissed as a huge waste of everybody's time. Today, parallel processing is the technology that underpins all supercomputers. My discovery of practical parallel processing is a paradigm shift and a quantum leap over both the conventional supercomputer and the vector supercomputer. As expected, 
my invention of practical parallel processing opened the doors to the solutions of several grand challenge problems arising in science, engineering, and medicine. Before my discovery of 1989, the parallel supercomputer was not used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas. After my discovery of practical parallel processing, one in ten supercomputers were purchased by the petroleum industry and used to parallel process their inertial boundary value grand challenge problems of mathematical physics. Before my discovery, to parallel process a grand challenge problem and do so across an ensemble of eight processors was believed to be impossible. That impossible speed up barrier was enshrined into supercomputer textbooks as the infamous Hamdahl's law of diminishing returns in the speeds of the parallel supercomputer. The discovery of practical parallel processing was the new knowledge that fueled the creation of a new computer science. Extreme scaled parallel processed supercomputing opened new frontiers in computational physics. The poster boy of computational physics is the general circulation model that must be parallel processed and used to foresee otherwise unforeseeable climate changes. Every new computer has to come out of the new fastest supercomputer. A new computer that did not come out of the fastest computer is not a new computer. The serial supercomputer was developed during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. My experimental discovery of practical parallel processing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 made the news headlines because it was then believed to be impossible. Back then, parallel processing was mocked as a beautiful theory that lacked an experimental confirmation Parallel processing was mocked because a theory is merely an idea that is not positively true. My experimental discovery of parallel processing inspired the birth of the new supercomputer that gave rise to a new computer science, new mathematics, and new physics. That discovery put to rest the saying that parallel processing is a beautiful theory that lacked an experimental confirmation. The inventor of the parallel processing technology created the new knowledge that made it practical to manufacture and use the modern supercomputer that cost up to $1.25 billion each. The contribution of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer is this. At 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July 1989, I discovered practical parallel processing, namely how to harness the power of 65,536 processors that encircled a globe as a new internet and encircled that globe in the manner the internet encircles planet Earth. At the time that I experimentally discovered practical parallel processing, the perceived upper limit in supercomputing that was codified in supercomputer textbooks as Anders' law was a maximum speed increase of a factor of 8 derived from an ensemble of 8 or more processors. Anders' law is a law of diminishing returns that states that as the number of processors increases, the total supercomputing speed should decrease. In 1989, the top prize in the extremely active field of supercomputing 
that attracted some of the best, some of the top minds in mathematics, physics, and computer science was awarded to me alone. I stood out because my research was never funded. I stood out because I was the only person that won that top prize alone, as opposed to 50 persons sharing the prize. I made my prize within discovery of practical parallel supercomputing at age 34, and I won that prize at age 35. I formally received that top prize at the 35th IEEE Computer Society International Conf Conference that took place on February 28, 1990 in San Francisco, California. Shortly after that international conference, newspapers ran articles titled, quote, African Supercomputer Genius Wins Top U.S. Prize, unquote. The June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal also highlighted my contributions to the development of the supercomputer that won that top prize at that international computer science conference. The limit of a factor of eight was a limit in human thought. It was not a physical limit to what the supercomputer could parallel process. I was in the news headlines because I discovered how to parallel process and do so across millions upon millions of commodity processors that were identical to each other. I was in the news headlines because I discovered how to parallel process across a new internet and invented the technology at a time the leading minds in the field of supercomputing considered that invention to be impossible. That discovery of practical parallel processing that I made on the 4th of July 1989 was the first and the most impactful step towards changing the way we look at both what makes the computer fastest and makes the supercomputer super. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.